Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Thanks for joining us today. The Friday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus in chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. My title for Leviticus 6 is this. How do I start my day with God? How do I start my day with God? I don't like going through my day, ending up saying I wasn't very successful for God today. I want to end my day having the word of God ringing in my ears. Good job. Well done today. Well, how does that happen? Leviticus 6 will help us. Get your Bible and join me there. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. I want to begin this way. I've got a son-in-law. His name is Chris. He obviously married our daughter, Sierra. Chris is 35 years old, never married before. So he and our daughter obviously got started in married life a little late. Now, Chris did not have a dad around to learn from about how to be a husband. So every once in a while, guess what? He does a stupid thing as a husband. We all do that, especially early on in our married life. And so what does he do? He calls me up for advice. I really try not to meddle in my daughter and son-in-law's married life, but sometimes he blurts out these words. Are you ready? Quote, Dad, just tell me what I'm supposed to do, end quote. Now, Chris is not looking for any theoretical answers. He's looking for simple, practical steps to fix the problem that he has created. Friend, do you understand that? Well, let's make a transfer. As believers in Jesus Christ, we're in a relationship with our Savior. And sometimes we do stupid stuff like sin, or we let the love of worldly things crowd out our love for Christ. And when that happens, we need some practical, simple steps to help us get back on track and help us to not make the same mistake tomorrow. And that's exactly what Leviticus 6 does for the Old Testament Jew. And the advice is good for us today. Get your Bible and Join me in Leviticus chapter 6. Friend, I have a gospel tract in my hand. This ministry, as my announcer said, is the radio arm of a larger ministry where we publish gospel tracts. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're talking about a short written presentation of the Word of God. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, we'll send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. One of the tracks in there is this one in my hand entitled, You Can No! Exclamation point. Dear friend, I like all of our tracks, but I have ones I like more than others, and this is right near the top of my list. You can know, and here's why I like it. Number one, it's beautiful on the outside. A lot of books are showing there, and people looking for knowledge kind of thing. But the reason I like it is because it answers very blunt, straightforward questions that everybody is asking, but it answers them with a clear verse of Scripture. Questions like, is there a hereafter? Answer, Bible verse, Hebrews 9, 27. Question, is there a heaven? Answer, John 14, 2. Is there a hell? Answer, Matthew 25. Where do the saved go at death? Where do the lost go when they die? But then, it gets to this question. Where will I go when I die? Now we're getting to the place where the rubber hits the road. And then the last question asked here is this. How can I know that when I die, I will go to heaven? Friend, there's a great, clear gospel presentation. You need the track. It's a great track. If you can't wait to the end of the program, please just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. And by the way, 
We've been saying all this week that we are right now in the throes of trying to get ready to print 1.3 million gospel tracts inside of Pakistan. Every time we do this, thousands of people come to Christ and are publicly identified through baptism. But the cost of this is $22,000. We are looking for some help to get this task done. If you can help us, I will guarantee you, your investment will see people come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, and you'll meet them in eternity. Please pray about helping us accomplish this 1.3 million gospel tract project. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 6, look at verse 1. It says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and he lie unto his neighbor in that which he hath delivered him to keep, stop there, go to verse 4, then it shall be because he hath sinned and is guilty, stop there, jump to verse 9, it says, command Aaron and his son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. Jump now to verse 14 where it says, and this is the law of the meat or the grain offering, and the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord before the altar. And now verses 19 and 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed. Stop. Right there, please. Now, this chapter is so very practical, and I apologize for just giving you some highlights from the beginning paragraphs that are found here. There are four parts to chapter six here. Three of the parts deal with giving us more information about the offerings, three offerings already mentioned earlier in this book. The fourth part deals with the priest who help the Jewish people do their sacrificing. Here is the outline for Leviticus chapter 6 that I use. Again, there's four parts. Each part will begin with the word keep, K-E-E-P. Are you ready? Get your notepad, jot them down. Number one, keep forgiven. Keep forgiven, verses 1 through 7. We are not to let sins stack up. We are to keep short accounts with God. A sin offering is there. Number two, keep the fire Keep the fire, verses 8 through 13. Here, they were given more details about the burnt offering. That was the offering of personal dedication to God. Part three is keep the food. Keep the food, verses 14 to 18. Here are more details about the meal or grain offering. And this offering was when a person consecrated their daily work to God. And then number four, keep the family, verses 19 through 30. These verses give details on how the family of Aaron, who served as priests, were to be aided and do some aiding and sharing in the sacrifices to help the people worship. All right, here are the four sections here, but also Here are the four practical steps of promoting a daily walk and a relationship with God. Step one, keep clean or keep forgiven. For you and I, we use 1 John 1, 9. You and I still haven't gotten past the need for Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, which say, search me, O God, and know me, try my heart, see if there be any way, any wicked way in me. We need to keep clean, keep short accounts with God. Step that step one. Step two, keep dedicated to God. Each day begin with a solemn prayer of Romans 12, 1 and 2 to God. I'm going to say more about that here in a moment. Step number three, keep my daily activities as a gift to God. My activities are to be done for God's glory. And then step four, I am a believer priest, the New Testament says, so I need to keep my role in ministering for others and to others fit and proper to God. So, therefore, there are going to be some things I will deliberately do, and there's going to be some things I will deliberately not do. So, my friend, if you and I begin each day with these four tasks in view, we're going to have a successful day in our walk with the Lord and for the Lord. But I want to bring you back here 
to that step two section here, verses 8 through 13. Let me read beginning at verse 9. Here's what the Bible says. Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is a burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, of, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put up upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed consumed with a burnt offering on the altar, and he will put them beside the altar, and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments as normal apparel, and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning on it, it shall not be put out. Just stop there for a second. If you have your paper for taking notes there, there are three actions here that I think are critical. Here they are. Number one, the priest was told to get rid of the ashes. Get rid of old ashes. These ashes were from the sacrifice of personal dedication. These were not sin ashes at all. Every day, the ashes from yesterday's personal dedication were removed because a fresh dedication sacrifice needed to to be made. That is not only true for the Old Testament saints, it's true for New Testament saints. That's step one, get rid of the old ashes. Step two in these verses is this, stir up the fire. Stir up the fire. Verse 12 goes on to say that the fresh wood had to be put on the fire. The fire of personal dedication to Christ for you and me is a daily need. And what is that wood that we use to keep our fire burning? Well, friend, it is the word of God. Is not my word like a fire, God asked over in Jeremiah 23? And the answer is yes, it is a fire. By the way, along with using God's word to keep our fire strengthened and and our love for Christ and dedication for Christ strong, we also need to have an accountability partner or maybe a couple of them. By that, I mean godly men need other godly men, and godly women need other godly women. Godly teenagers need other godly teenagers and their parents. Friend, so many people in their walk with God try to be Lone Ranger Christians, and God never intended for that. That's why he made the local church. Every believer needs a local church, not a house church, a local church where they can have others to help strengthen them, be accountable uh, one to another to stay strong in our walk with God. The third step verse 12 talks about here is putting on a new sacrifice, a new burnt offering on the fire. The verse says, and the, lay the burnt offering in order upon it, upon the altar, daily putting ourselves on the altar of dedication. That Romans 12, 1 and 2 passage is critical here. It's something you and I need to do. Dear soul winner, these three things are for us. This is how we need to begin our day every day and our walk with God. Let me ask you, are there any of these that you don't want to do? If so, then a good old-fashioned no-holds-barred heart checkup done by the Holy Spirit is needed in your life and mine. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.